Welcome back from lunch everybody. Hope you had a good time. Got a couple of quick announcements before we start. If you haven't already, please mute your cell phone so that uh, everybody else doesn't have to listen while you scramble to get it muted. Uh, if you haven't been down to the business hall, you'll want to check that out on level two down in the ballrooms. Uh, go visit the vendors and let them know that uh, you appreciate their sponsorship. Also tonight, the Pony Awards are going to be in Lagoon JKL at 6.30. Uh, if you don't know where that's at, find any of the guys with the blue t-shirts running around. The conference associates can do a great job of helping you find your way. Uh, right now, you are in South Seas CDF. The, uh, the next talk we have is all the 4G modules could be hacked. And our speakers are Xu Ping Gao and Chang Huang. Yes? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, this talk is all the 4G modules could be hacked. Uh, uh, here's our team, and uh, we are from the Baidu Security Lab. I'm Shu Peng. Uh, I'm Huan Zheng. Okay, uh, let me introduce the agenda of today's talk first. Uh, first of uh, all, we will introduce the fundamentals of the 4G modules. Secondly, uh, we will introduce the new attack surface of the 4G module. And thirdly, we discuss what uh, needed to be done in order to carry out a successful attack. For example, obtain the firmware or get a root shell and some. And first, we will talk about uh, various ways to discover the vulnerabilities. And uh, last, we will provide some better defense practice based on our experience. Uh, okay. Uh, this uh, picture showing more than 50 various 4G modules and the devices we have studied. The two row about, about some 4G routing devices and some vehicle 5G uh, devices. Yes, many vulnerabilities of the 4G module we mentioned today also exist on 5G. Uh, in the middle, there are some car T boxes and some portable Wi Fi devices. Uh, down the bottom, there are all kinds of brand of 4 d module, about uh, 30 kinds. Uh, most of them are PCA interface and LCC packages. Uh, we uh, what we have found, we have found uh, several general uh, vulnerabilities uh, uh, with different uh, uh, baseband and uh, uh, some risk in several V2X 5G modules and RCE in more than five cars tipos and uh, various uh, and vulnerabilities in all parts of 4G modules. Uh, because vulnerability repair is a long process, so we just uh, show you uh, the vulnerabilities that we have uh, which have been fixed uh, in this slide. Uh, okay, uh, why do we do this study? First of all, we found that uh, not many people have uh, done relevant research in this direction before, and uh, no one is aware of the security problem and the wide impact of the 4G model. So we want to shed a light on multi direction of security research. For example, CAS now have, uh, have the networking functions, but it seems that no one has attacked the TBOS or, or called the TCU. Uh, there are also security issues with the baseband. A baseband security is really important. Researchers usually talk about the baseband security of Qualcomm and Samsung. Uh, in fact, there are many other baseband chips, uh, such as Intel, Huawei, DT, MTK, Marvel, Ublock, and uh, uh, so on. And uh, compared uh, with the mobile phones, uh, it's easier to analyze so the 4G model. Uh, so we will also introduce some new and uh, effective attack surface and uh, method. Uh, in short, the goal of the slide is not only to introduce some special uh, one basis of the 4G model, but also to provide you with some new ideas and methods for a successful attack. Uh, we can see the 4G module everywhere. Uh, IoT devices could connect to the internet through the 4G module. Uh, for example, uh, we can control our car remotely by the APP. Uh, it seems the communication system of the car is online all the time. Maybe some process is established and maintains a long-running TCP connection. Uh, they are other devices such like a 4G Wi-Fi, 4G router, a ticket vending machine, uh, our laptop, and some industrial devices, uh, even the slot machines in Las Vegas. Uh, 
the S minus three interface. In fact, uh, in, the internal structure is the same. We will see later. Uh, on the left is a circuit about the structure of the vending machine. We can see a module with PC, uh, mini PCIe interface plugged in on the right. Uh, this is actually an uh, ARM process motherboard uh, running Linux or Android system. On the right is a Tesla Model 3 4 module, uh, which implements uh, navigation, mobile, remote control system, upgrade, and other functions. The module is attached directly to the motherboard. Uh, in this uh, slide, on the left is an uh, industrial forge route. We can see that uh, there is a mini PCIe interface uh, module on the motherboard. In fact, it's a common router as a slot to implement the function of intro, uh, internet sets. Uh, the device on the right is a bit special. It's a power uh, it's a portable Wi-Fi device, but it doesn't have a separate uh, 4G module. It uses ZTE-CX chip chat, uh, chip stand. In fact, it's also a 4G module. A chip in the module is attached to the PCB board, uh, which implements networking, uh, driving Wi-Fi, running LTP service, and other functions. Uh, there are many other devices designed in this way, uh, such as some local 4G router. Uh, okay, let's look at the structure of the 4G model. In fact, the 4G model is a complete uh, computer system. Uh, the ARM CPU and the baseband system are integrated in the main control chip. They all use the NAND flash, which has a large storage space and the low cost. And uh, there are other chips such as power management, radio frequency chip, and so on. Uh, let's look at the software. Most of the 4G models are embedded Linux system and a few RTOS system. Uh, this is a picture of the internal structure of the Qualcomm EC20 model with the top shade removed. Uh, the memory chip is NAD flash plus DRAM memory, which is uh, integrated into a chip. By looking at the module, uh, uh, by looking at the model, uh, the flash is BJ162 pin. If we want to read or modify the data inside, uh, we need to buy a corresponding chip socket. Uh, so, how do these models work and how should they be used? Uh, we can see that the upper left corner is the LCC module of Founder uh, technology. They built a minimal system for it, including power uh, supply, SIM card, USB interface. Yes, all devices uh, communicate with the 4G module using USB cable. First, we need to install the corresponding drivers in the operating system. Uh, when the module is plugged in, the operating system loads the corresponding driver uh, according to the VID, PID, and the interface number. Uh, then the system generates uh, a network card and gets the corresponding IP address. Then uh, access the internet. Uh, then the 4G model usually supports multiple connection modes, and each mode has a different kernel mo module or drivers. For example, the upper part of the slide shows the PPP and the RMNT modes. Uh, when the dialing is successful, uh, the device will get IP address from the operator, just like the IoT device directly gets a public IP address. Uh, here, the Van Zero uh, network segment is also considered a public network address. Another way, for example, in RNDS or ECS, ECM mode, uh, the 4G module usually have, has two network cards. Uh, one dials first to get the public IP address from operator, and another network card is connected to the IoT device using Van Zero network segment. It looks as like the 4G model becomes a router and the IoT device uh, says the internet through its router. Uh, the second part is about this kind of stance. Uh, 
Here I mark the, uh, the RD, RNDIS and ESI modes because these two modes don't require additional uh, drivers, uh, particularly convenient to us. So now most of the forging models are usually uh, are using this, uh, most of the forging models are using this mode. The T box, the T box in the car is this way. Uh, so you see, uh, the security of the foreign model has uh, turned uh, into the security of the Linux system imposed in the network. Okay, uh, let's introduce some new attack surface. Uh, as we said uh, earlier, that uh, most of the foreign model have were uh, embedded in the system. Uh, so why is the uh, uh, operating system? Uh, many reasons, uh, such as supporting uh, two, uh, three, four G, uh, which requires a computing resource, and uh, for example, automobile, uh, automobile manufacturers often need to run their own programs and uh, uh, own programs in t to uh, achieve remote control and other functions, uh, which requires the module with the secondary development. Uh, now let's uh, analyze the attack surface of the foreign model. As we said just now, uh, all the current foreign model have a complete Linux operating system. At the same time, we found that uh, most modules now use uh, RNDS or ECM networking mode. It means that the module will be assigned a separate IP address. Uh, this provides a chance of attack. Linux operating system often has some listening ports or uh, connect to the cloud for OT updates or remote management. Now it has a separate IP. We can directly assess this port, uh, inter interrupt, uh, intercept its IP link, and do some MITM attacks, and so on. So now the attacker is uh, essentially the task of to analyze the hot system security uh, when the linear hot are imposed to the internet or intranet. Uh, but wait, it seems that we can't assess this uh, separate IP unless in the same lab, uh, such as Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, so let's talk about uh, some extended uh, attack surface. A 4G module is a very secular uh, device connected to the operator's network. But some op operators, due to configuration errors, uh, don't have network isolation. Uh, so client can assess the IP of other device. And uh, all these 4G modules support 2G GSM mode. Because of the security problem of GSM, we can use the fake base station to monitor and modify traffic. So uh, also can obtain IP links and access ports. And there are also many third-party services added to the mod module, such as the car control service. Uh, let's uh, summarize the, uh, the attack ideas. First of all, we need to collect uh, enough information and explore it uh, and explore it uh, vulnerabilities through so, uh, get shell, firmware an an analysis, network analysis, and so on. Then uh, maybe a lot of uh, reverse engineer work here, uh, mainly analyzing the, the process of various listening ports. Uh, then we need to consider how to run our attack code, and uh, we introduce the traditional, traditional methods, mainly in LAN network, such as Wi-Fi hotspot to assess the part uh, of the 4G model to attack. And uh, the new attack method, uh, we can use the correct configuration of the operator network to transform the local LAN attacks into a very wide range of remote LAN attacks, which can generate uh, increase the scope of attacks. Uh, in addition, because of uh, 2G spot, we have a way to full control the IP link to the nearby 4G module. We can directly assess its port and run our attack code. With this uh, attacking ideas, it seems very easy to attack the 4G module. Okay, uh, let's first talk about uh, using fake base station to attack. 
Because client can't identify whether the base station is real or not in GSM um, network, uh, we can build a fake base station system to attack and uh, control traffic. Uh, interestingly, this attack is uh, effective for all 4G modules, and uh, the problem will, will proceed for a long time, regardless uh, of whether the operator shut down the 2G base station or not. Uh, it's too difficult to build a fake base station, but uh, previously people have not solved the, the problem of auto, uh, auto attachment. If it doesn't uh, attach automatically, uh, clients need to select to the fake base station manually. Uh, inspired by studio base station in China, uh, we can improve the C2 uh, parameter, uh, parameter in, GS, uh, in GSM broadcasting channel and the client will automatically connect to our fake base station. C2 is a cell reselection uh, program meter. Uh, the larger the value, the more client tends to connect to the base station. Uh, we can build uh, our fake base station via software radio such as Blade RF and the ESBTS system. Uh, but uh, we need to change change the value of C2. Uh, this parameter is not set in yet BTS. So let's hard decode it uh, in the source code. Uh, set it uh, to a maximum and uh, recomplete. Uh, here we need to remind you that it's illegal to build a fake base station, although this attack is very effective. Uh, you can test in the sheet box and show in the finger on the right. Uh, in order to force the downgrade of 4G module to 2G, you need to build uh, inter, uh, interfere with uh, uh, software, radio, uh, software radio equipment, such as sending some white noise interference uh, in the current 3G and the 4G band. It's also illegal. You just need to know that uh, uh, this method is effective. Finally, the 4G model automa automatically attached to our fake base station, like the Whirlpool. Uh, uh, the lower right finger shows that the C2 value is already very high, uh, usually around 70. So now we can now fully control the IP link, uh, monitor all the IP data transmission, access the point, run our report, and uh, modify the date. The most common approach used is to set the ports, such as SSH and other service. Uh, now let's talk about attack through operator operators intranet. Uh, we have just implemented IP links to assess nearby devices, but is there a way to attack remotely? Uh, most uh, operators uh, assign a uh, 10 or 172 network segment uh, address to clients, but many of them do, do, do not have network uh, isolation, such as uh, China Uncom and uh, China Techcom. Uh, at the same time, most uh, 4G modules don't have a firewall enabled. This means that we can directly assess the port of uh, other clients through the port scan. Uh, the picture on the right is the result of scanning open ports of ADB and the telnet service on the intranet of the operator. You can tell that many clients have uh, those ports open. Uh, more interestingly, we can manage a wide range of attack through private, uh, private APN. Uh, private APN is a technology that clients connect, connect to their intranet server directly through operator's terminal line, uh, just like the VPN connection. Uh, clients and the server uh, communication with each other through one zero line statements. Special SIM card and APN access points are required. This kind of connection is widely adopted by most car companies and commonly seen among well-known IoT equipment, such as China's U-Ball vending machine. And the clients in this intranet are equipped with the same type or made by the same company. So we can look for vulnerability in such device, then launch a massive attack. As a result, uh, we gain full control of all these devices. 
so how can we get the configuration of the API set point? Uh, for example, so firmware analysis and the log analysis. And uh, how to connect to the target uh, private APN network? We can detach the uh, eSIM chip uh, on the motherboard, then attach it back to our 4G module, and uh, use the AT command to configure the correct APN access point. So now we can connect to the manufacturer's private APN network and start the post scan and hack. Uh, I just uh, introduced some new text surface. Let's implement the uh, attached preparation work. Uh, to get ready for a successful attack, you need to complete at least uh, one of the following. Uh, get the firmware, get the shell, and obtain network traffic. Uh, in general, getting the shell is the most inefficient. And uh, after getting the shell, it's easy to get firmware and the network data. But sometimes it's not uh, always possible to get the shell. Uh, let's talk a uh, closer to look at how to achieve it. Uh, first, uh, I will introduce several methods for obtain, uh, obtaining firmware. Uh, if this method don't work, there is the ultimate method, NAD flash dump. Uh, we can get the firmware by downloading the firmware update program from the official website and unpacking it. Uh, the finger shows the firmware update program of a well-known 4G Wi-Fi device. Uh, we easily get uh, the Linux, Linux system uh, partition, uh, partition inside by unpacking the .exe file uh, with the binwalk. Uh, the firmware can be obtained through the manufacturer's upgrade tools. Most manufacturers have provided upgrade tools to the developers. For example, Qualcomm's module have a 908 recovery mode, which is set by short circuit some solder points. We can get the update tool from vendor touch support, which initialization files for all partitions. Uh, we can see that uh, the tool contains the uh, initial image of all partitions. We need to focus on system.img. Uh, this file use, uses the uh, UBIF, UBIFS file system. We can use the uh, UBI reader to, to successfully extract uh, the file format and uh, get the uh, final Linux file system. Uh, if we uh, if we can't get an uh, upgrade to there is an uh, ultimate solution, NAD flash dump. Uh, NAD flash uh, is more uh, comp uh, complex to read and uh, modify than EMIC flash. A lower right corner chip is a common BJ863 chip. It's very small and needs a special NAD programmer to read and write. Uh, after dumping the chip, we can use the beamwalk to uh, identify the fuel system. Uh, let's introduce how to get the shell. Uh, why do we want to get shell? If we can get shell, we, uh, it will be more convenient for us to view uh, process, files, network, and the debug vulnerable programs. Uh, it's very interesting that many 4G modules uh, use the common password, OE Linux 123, and uh, in this, in some time, the password may not be required. Uh, in addition to stereo port, you can also use some remote management tools such as ADB, Telnet, SSH, and, and so on. Uh, this service can be obtained by port scanning. Uh, other methods such as getting a shell from, from AT command after the module is connected, uh, the USB interface will be virtualized with several serial ports such as DEV, TTY, USB 0, uh, so which AT command can be sent. 
According to the manual, we can send AT command to open the ADB service, or some module could uh, uh, execute system command through the through sending AT command. Uh, if n not all of this work, we still have the ultimate way to modify NAD flash. Uh, add a telnet process to the startup script and reattach the NAD flash back. Uh, let's look at how to get the network traffic. We can build a folder based station system. Uh, where is the folder based station? Because it's used for research. Uh, compared with 2 j based station, building uh, the 4 will be more stable, uh, convenient, and fast. Uh, as you can see in the figure on the right, uh, our client automatically connects to the 4 j base station and gets the IP address. We can use the shark to monitor the traffic. Uh, we use the uh, S SRS LT 4 j base station system in this method, uh, which is much more convenient uh, uh, installation than OAI. Uh, finally, Finally, we, did to, uh, we need to write a SIM card. We need to buy a writable SIM card and a reader. Uh, note that uh, these SIM cards are only used for security testing, uh, not for other illegal things. Uh, we need to write the correct IMSI KI and OP to the SIM card to ensure that these parameters are the same as those in the SRS LTE. Uh, finally, we start our 4 base station and it works perfectly. In fact, no matter whether it's a 2 j base station or 4 j base station, it contains a large number of configuration items. Uh, time relations in this talk will only explain the most important to you. Uh, now let's have a recap. What information can we get from this preparation? Uh, most likely, uh, the shell will be captured. Then the firmware system and the network traffic will certainly be captured. Uh, these are essential for the follow up vulnerability menu. Okay. Okay. Shupong just talked a lot about the attack surface and preparation for attacking the 4G modules. Now let me show the critical vulnerabilities we found in detail. Uh, let's focus on system management service vulnerabilities first. Usually 4G modules uh, run Linux system. Uh, Linux systems start many remote ma uh, management services such as SSH, uh, Telnet, and uh, a web server, uh, we can use fast scan tools uh, like mask scan, uh, which can scan the open uh, the ports opening status in just a few minutes. Uh, for example, uh, we found a 4G module uh, open port 23, uh, which means the telnet device is started. Uh, in most cases, telnet need password to log in. Uh, we can extract uh, extract the etc password file from the firmware and then correct it by using uh, hashcat tools. Uh, and if you're rich, you can buy a lot of GPU to speed up the crack. Uh, the 4G modules uh, generally are not using one machine, uh, one secret key or one secret password uh, strategy. So if you uh, successfully crack the password, uh, which means that you have just cracked the password of all 4G modules uh, of this manufacturer. Uh, once we get the password, you can successfully log into the system remotely, uh, so the, the device is ours. Uh, in addition, uh, we find that many well-known manufacturers of 4G modules uh, have open uh, remote ADB devices uh, by default. Uh, we only list some of them in this table. Uh, in fact, uh, some automobile manufacturers uh, also open remote ADB devices by default. Uh, what's the consequence of this? Uh, 
uh, we can simply use ADB tools to connect the uh, uh, 5555 port uh, of this module. Uh, we can simply <coughs> uh, log into the system uh, without authentication. Uh, usually, uh, it has no password, uh, and we can get a shell remotely. Uh, there are many other type of system management services uh, vulnerabilities, uh, such as uh, weak password for web management services and even SSH uh, services that do not require password uh, are funded on some car. And some manufacturers, uh, in order to convenience the repair, uh, the repair uh, uh, in order to convenience the repair of the 4G modules, uh, they hide they hide backdoor in some external uh, monitoring port. Uh, maybe you can use the backdoor to open telnet or do something dangerous. Uh, I will talk uh, about an interesting case uh, like this uh, on the next page. Uh, as you see, uh, we find a <coughs> We find this, this vulnerability uh, six, years, uh, six months ago. Uh, we reported it to uh, uh, manufacturers, and the manufacturer has fixed it uh, already. Uh, this bug was uh, the, the manufacturer had a backdoor uh, in, in, a, in a port. Uh, in, in a port. Uh, sorry, uh, this lo lost a uh, PPT. Uh, um, uh, after reverse engineering, uh, we find uh, a port uh, monitoring uh, in 45. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, I backed into another PPT. Uh, Uh, and nowadays, we find many cars has APPs. Uh, the APP can issue uh, open uh, its window or, or open its engine remotely or remote, uh, unlock the car uh, from the mobile uh, phone APP. Uh, uh, we find uh, uh, so we buy uh, we buy a T box uh, from auto parts shops, uh, and uh, when we got the T box, uh, we find it was not open uh, ADB or Telnet, uh, but uh, uh, I, we find it's it's listening on a, on a port one uh, eight XX port, and uh, we find the Bing and use the Bing uh, to in, enable the USB. A, uh, USB AD, ADB uh, debug port, uh, and when uh, we uh, so we got get a shell, we use the shell uh, successfully uh, logged into the uh, Linux system, and we find uh, there's an, another process uh, listening port two five two four x x x, and uh, we use IDA to analyze this, uh, this port uh, this 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 program. Uh, we find uh, tell that related functions. Uh, As you see, uh, we found a dangerous function. Uh, this function uh, pass the receive the data from the port uh, and build a command uh, to execute. Uh, as the picture shows, uh, it can be used to open uh, Telnet D services. Uh, we analyzed uh, the logic of the protocol in this port. Uh, actually, uh, it uses PKI system, RSA certifications, and AES uh, encryptions. Uh, but we find uh, there are multiple uh, vulnerabilities, uh, such as AES, AES key. The AES key is hard coded in binary, uh, and we get the RSA private key uh, from the file system, uh, and the password of the private key we, we guessed it out. Uh, so we can uh, use it to generate public key, uh, so we can communicate with that port. Uh, uh, we we use those problems. Uh, uh, successfully bypass the TLS certificate uh, verifications. Uh, 
Uh, after reverse engineering, uh, we write uh, the explored code uh, like this. Um, as expected, we finally start up the uh, uh, telnet service uh, on the T box through this port uh, by using this exploit. However, uh, telnet D in this mode uh, requires password verification. So here comes the new problem. Uh, what the password is? is. Uh, uh, we, use, we use the most powerful four piece of uh, NVIDIA uh, 2080 Ti graphic card to crack the uh, password. Uh, a day later, uh, we get the password. Uh, uh, the password is very complex, including big and little case the charts, uh, numbers, and special charts. Uh, now we have a root shell uh, of T-Box. How can we control the car through the root shell? Uh, let's learn how remote, ca uh, control, uh, how remote control of when call is impl implemented first. Uh, the red dotted line uh, in this, this figure uh, represents uh, the 4G module. Uh, it has a long connection uh, with the cloud server. Uh, uh, when the open door uh, instruction is issued from APP, uh, the 4G module received the instruction. Uh, a process in MPU uh, communicate with MCU through the series port. Uh, another process in MCU receives the instruction and pass it and dispatch the command to Canvas uh, to open the door. Uh, I think uh, this could be the easiest way to uh, control uh, the car. We can write a program to record the data that MPU write to MCU uh, when the uh, um, instruction is issued from the uh, mobile phone. Uh, and, and then, uh, and, 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 we want to uh, when, and when we want to hack another car, uh, the step is to use our uh, exploit to uh, uh, to attack that, car, uh, that, that port, uh, uh, so we get a telnet shell. And get the shell, uh, and then we execute the program to replay the data we recorded before uh, the, the, the door will be will open. So uh, the most important question is uh, how to run our attack code or how to access that port. Do you remember the attack method that Supong uh, mentioned before? Uh, through a fake base station or operator uh, internet or Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, you can access the port and run the exploit uh, without touching the car. Uh, if the car manufacturers uh, use, use the private APN uh, network without isolation, uh, everything will become simple or terrible. Uh, in the picture, uh, in the right picture, uh, we entered the private APN network of the T-Box. Uh, we scanned the port uh, 24XXX and find that there are many devices were open uh, this port. So, so we can attack many devices uh, at the same time. Uh, maybe we can use this ranged attack uh, method to build a, a zombie class team, uh, just like the things uh, in Fast Frozen 8. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about the vulnerability in FOTA. FOTA is a way to uh, upgrade a firmware. We find some 4G modules uh, frequently uh, check whether the current version is the latest. Uh, some devices uh, check update when they start up and some are every 40 uh, minutes. Uh, in this case, after reverse engineering, uh, we find that he logged into a, a, a FTP server to check for new firmware versions. Because the FTP uh, username and password is hard-coded, uh, we can get it. So we can log into the FTP server successfully use that uh, username and uh, password. After log logging, we find many versions of uh, uh, the, the 4G devices, the, the firmware of all devices. But this is not the crazy thing. Uh, we find that this FTP account has writable privilege. And another good news, 
the 4G module uh, did not verify the firmware file in the FTP. Uh, so we can upload uh, firmware with back backdoor to the FTP server, and the 4G modules uh, everywhere. The 4G modules will download the new firmware automatically and upgrade to it. So this means we can hack all 4G modules of this manufacturer in just uh, in just one day. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, we have just talked about uh, some problems uh, on FOTA uh, server side. Uh, let's look. Uh, let's look at the vulnerability of uh, FOTA client side. We find that some 4G module uh, listen to some port for um, um, FOTA. For example, uh, in this case, we find the 4G module uh, listen to uh, three uh, uh, five four XXS port and use it to receive the upgrade command. Uh, this port was originally used for uh, inter-process communication, but it was uh, incorrectly bounded to a public, not local host, uh, so we can send the data to the port uh, remotely. After correct the data exchange protocol uh, of this port, uh, and, uh, and the reverse engineering the structure of the upgrade firmware file. Uh, as, as you can see, uh, the structure is very complex. Uh, it costs us a long time. Now, uh, but we finally work out it. Now we can make a, a new firmware with backdoor and force the 4G modules uh, to update it. So we hacked it. And almost every 4G module has its own AT command uh, passing process. And some manufacturers in implement some custom cap capabilities. Uh, for example, uh, only the factory engineers know some hidden AT command. Uh, if we can find them out, uh, maybe we can open the ADB service uh, through the hidden instructions. Uh, we mentioned it, be it before. Uh, in another case, uh, AT command injection vulnerability is also a lot. For example, uh, the following picture is an introduction for adding root uh, uh, in development document. Uh, we analyze the system command called here deeply. Uh, we find laser, uh, laser command injection vulnerabilities. Uh, in this image on the right, we append LS string to the AT command. Uh, as you can see, the return content shows the LS command executed success through the AT command. That proves laser command injection vulnerability in AT command passing. Uh, in general, uh, the, the AT command can be only executed on USB which like a serialized port, but some 4G modules support use of SMS to execute AT command. Uh, it's usually used for remote control. Uh, if we can find uh, if we can find an AT command injection vulnerability in this scenario, we can exploit the bug remotely by sending an attack message to it. Uh, in fact, we did find such problem in some 4G modules. This is a 4G module uh, that can support uh, use SMS to execute AT command. Uh, in this case, we find it requires a password uh, in the content to uh, verify. If the password is right, it will execute the AT command in SMS. But the, the way he verify uh, is too weak. Uh, still, the old problem, the password is hard-coded in binary. Uh, once we get a device, we can extract the password uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, of it. So uh, well, we can get, it, uh, get the password from the firmware. Uh, as you see, this is the support of the AT command of this 4G module. Uh, actually, we find a command injection vulnerability in passing SMS AT command. Uh, this command is set FCSN. Uh, finally, we get a reversed shell by simply uh, send a text message to it. We hacked it remotely. There are many other successful cases of attack because this, tech, uh, this, this talk limit 
uh, 50 minutes. I cannot talk about them detailly one by one. Uh, let me introduce them uh, quickly, uh, such as we can use uh, uh, the JAMA to uh, attack the 4G module, force it drop to uh, 2G, and use main in the middle and the browser uh, vulnerabilities zero day or n day to interest in the IVI of the car. And the debug process on the 4G mode is also an attack surface. Uh, DDoS it, uh, it to death uh, may cause the car lose connection, uh, with, the connection uh, with the cloud server for a long time. And the, and the IPv6, uh, uh, even if the 4G mode has in open, in, enabled the IP tables firewall, we can still uh, access uh, some dangerous port. Uh, why? Because the IP6 uh, tables are not enabled. We can simply bypass the firewall by using IPv6 address. And almost every 4G Wi-Fi uh, use uh, eight digital password. Uh, they are all numbers, all numbers. Uh, is is weak password, and you can use DOS uh, to get the handshake uh, packet, then collect it uh, with many uh, graphic card. Uh, you can collect the password uh, what, uh, in a few minutes, and after collect the, the password, you are in the same internet as the uh, 4G module. You can launch further attacks. Uh, in the next uh, uh, chapter. Uh, let's talk about suggestions for defending ac against uh, those attacks. Uh, uh, we have talked about uh, a, a, a lot of attack methods and vulnerabilities uh, detail before, uh, and it seems there are many problems. So how should we avoid those problems? Uh, I've communicated with many 4G module manufacturers and hardware manufacturers and car manufacturers, we find that they did not realize there's a completely uh, operating system in the 4G module. Uh, sometimes there may be many systems on the motherboard, uh, uh, such as the T-Box, there could be three or four uh, systems uh, on the motherboard. Uh, so first of all, we think uh, we must identify those systems and uh, the IPs. Uh, next, uh, uh, we should check the listening port, uh, exp especially those ports that can access remotely. Uh, we have found that many, many high risk vulnerability in most uh, of the listening port process, uh, if absolutely necessary. If not absolutely ne necessary, uh, do not listening uh, uh, port. And be, uh, be aware of the network access, access by using the 4G uh, interface. Uh, many people uh, think that 4G channel is secret, but actually a uh, hacker can play main in the middle easily through fake base station. Uh, another problem is that we find that uh, the 19.5 of IP tables rules, uh, IP table rules in the 4G modules uh, are empty. That means uh, the IP tables uh, in the 4G module is empty, uh, it's dangerous. So I think the simplest way to defend, defend those attacks is the development, uh, the, the developer should learn how, should learn how to use the firewall uh, well. Uh, that can solve 90% uh, of the security uh, uh, problem. Uh, so th this is our talk. Uh, thanks to our team member. Uh, you know, this is our teamwork. Uh, uh, this is our talk about security research of 4G modules. I hope that our work can give you some inspiration. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you can email to us. Uh, uh, today we, we have not Q&A uh, section because our English is not good. It is not so well. Maybe you, 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 you answer a question. Uh, we, we cannot uh, fully understand what you ask and, uh, and uh, we cannot answer you. Uh, but if you write an email, uh, we can uh, understand it well. And thank you for listening. <laughs>